So what if OSW had an American version? Like Red Dwarf or The Office? I don't know if you could... Uh, yeah. uh, there you go. Read that line there. Am I doing an American accent? Yes, if you yeah. could. If you, please. Uh, north, south, east, or west? North, east. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an easy one. Yeah, pass that man a bottle of soda. <laughs> <Fucking> Mayor Quimby. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, just read the rest of those there. <laughs> Which candy is he? Hey, and come in. It's OSW Review. <laughs> That was amazing, Steve. Excellent. Did I, I think have we got an OSW pilot then? <laughs> Did uh, Oop just read for two characters? Three. Three, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Did you not notice the uh, <laughs> subtle uh, <laughs> nuances? <laughs> uh, hello and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious Grapple Vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines, pay-per-view by pay-per-view. This is your host, your boy, Jay Hunter, joined as ever with a V1. What's the story? And the venerable, Mr. Oasey. Me too. It's episode 67, Bound for Glory 2017, and it's coming up right now. Who's FIFA, Steve? Oh, FIFA is lots of fun. Yeah. I uh, just have to get this in. We played five games and I won four. Uh, no. What? No. Well, no. three. Well, I won one on penalties. You which won, we don't count. Yeah, you won two. Three. You drew two. Three. And I we won did one. not draw three. I won three. I won one on penalties, which we classed as a draw, and you won the final game. But tonight, Steve, you were back. Fucking tonight. And you smashed me in that second game. Well, three uh, nil. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back in business. I'm ready to take you on anytime you want. Is it always one on one? Can you ever like get more people in? Like, would you ever take on three lads at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Twitch.tv slash OSW review. Awesome. I'll leave a link in below, so clicky wicky on that. Thanks so much to at Cranky Construct for the hand animated cuphead intro. <laughs> so you've got a little chocolate bar in your head? And you're standing on a pile of tennis? Ah, very good. And I've got my fucking waistcoat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, you like? Yeah, very good. Very nice. Very good. Nice. Ryan Probert. <laughs> Papa the Boopy. For the amazing piano theme, Carl Chocotano for the Click Doomsday Clock Abyss comic book poster. By the way, it's Chocotano. That's an awesome name. McCodum for the words that are coming out of my mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to animate us. You're going to earn that money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> So when we last left TNA in 2007, they just expanded Impact to two hours. They continued to hire ex-WCW and WWE talent like Booker T, Elijah Burke, Mick Foley, and push them over their own guys. 2009, Jarrett's affair with Kurt Angle's wife goes public, and Jarrett is put on a leave of absence. Dixie takes charge, all on time for January 4th, 2010. 
Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff come to TNA, brother, with both creative and on-screen roles, hiring even more ex-WCW and WWE names like Ric Flair, Bob Van Dam, Mr. Anderson. Oh, my God. Jeff Hartley. <laughs> Val Venus. Yeah. The Nasty Boys. Which kicked off the infamous Monday Night Wars 2, which lasted how long? Seven weeks. Eight. Oh, ten weeks. Oh. Oh, I'm you always have to ask this cunt first. <laughs> <laughs> Under Hogan and Bischoff, we got some good bollocks, like returning Jeff Jarrett, becoming a custodian, flipping burgers, and his double MA gimmick. Ah, uh, double J, double MA. Tapping out kids. And some bad bollocks, like Joker Sting, who had a crow, a physical crow, Hulkster's magical Hall of Fame ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that Dexter bloke, Samuel Shaw. I love the bit where Ken Anderson's in, he goes to Sam Shaw's house and he has like Sam's bedroom. <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing to my bedroom? <laughs> I said, what are you doing in my bedroom? <laughs> And in 2013, the Aces and Eights, a biker faction gimmick a la the Sons of Anarchy, loved main event heel Bully Ray, but when they hired Brooke Hogan mm. to be in that angle, get fucked. Absolutely. Most wrestling fans who watch TNA, when did you stop watching? Most people say Aces and Eights. Spike TV hated Russo's tasteless storylines, and Dixie assured them that he was gone. But Russo was secretly working as TNA creative consultant. Which is obvious if you watch the show. Yes. And accidentally emailed his notes to PW Insider's Mike Johnson instead of Mike Tanay. TNA! TNA! <laughs> it's amazing. He single-handedly killed this company's top run. Spike were furious. It came at the worst possible time as TNA's TV deal was just being renewed. Not anymore. Thanks, Russo. But at the end of the day, the blame has to fall at Dixie's feet. She's the gobshite who brought him back and she paid him. And she's the one who was in meetings with these guys lying to their faces. Yep. After nine years on Spike, their last broadcast was on Christmas Eve 2014. WCW lost its TV deal with TNT and died. ECW lost its TV deal with TNN and died. In 2014, TNA lost its TV deal with Spike, but lived! <laughs> it joined Destination America in 2015, smashing pumpkins, Billy Corgan, he shook hands with Dixie Carter, smiling politely, <laughs> got on board as both on and off screen talent. He fucking loves wrestling and wanted to see it succeed. Later that year, TNA lost its TV deal again and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't they made a massive habit of this? You know, like for their 15 years, they've been like, you didn't think we could do it, but we keep crawling back. <laughs> <sighs> they switched to pop TV in January 2016. Every change, the deal gets worse. Pop was a TV guide channel. This time, TNA weren't being paid to produce TV. Mm. They just got to have a TV slot. So it's like a mutually beneficial deal. Pop gets in programming and TNA get to promote their house shows and pay-per-views. Although they don't want to do pay-per-views because every time they do a pay-per-view, they lose money because you need at least 9,000 buys. <gasps> what, are, what are they on these days? They only do two a year now, right? Yeah, they usually do the pay-per-views as kind of special impacts. Like this impact is called Destination X now. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously enough, after years of poor attendance, sagging ratings, and losing money every time you put on a pay-per-view, TNA were having serious financial problems. It's been super messy these last two years. In 2016, Billy Corgan loaned Dixie Carter $1.8 million and was made president. Anthem Sports bought in 85% of the company. Aralux having 10%. That's the company with the Nazy, the Blue Brothers. Oh my god, the fucking Ron and Don Harris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, leaving Dixie with 5% and a token role, squeezing out Billy Corgan completely, who is now working with the NWA. He most certainly is. Billy Corgan actually bought the NWA. Ah, the Noggers with Attitude, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, so now with TNA, Anthem are in charge. Bischoff was asked if he'd buy TNA, and he said, I'm not in the market for a clown car. Oh, fuck. Brother Nero, I just had another premonition. The time is now. We must put our hands on Vanguard 1, and the expedition to God must begin. These massive changes were seen on TV as well. Talent-wise, a mass exodus of big names. Big, relative to TV. <laughs> <laughs> Velvet Sky. Oh. Magnus. Yeah. Bobby Roode. That one actually was a big loss because like Roode was there from like very early on, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. And, of course, the biggest ones to leave, the broken Hardy Boys. Yeah. And even the returning crew who came back in 2017 have already left. Like, low-key. You see, he, he's going around in his um, hitman garb, but he doesn't have guns, and you know, obviously there's no tattoo in the back. So he just looks like a car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Morgan, where's he? Yeah. And my boy Suicide hasn't been seen since August. Oh my god. But he came back, and he's still gone. <laughs> <laughs> the lead is appropriate (laughs) naming wise of the company ah shit (laughs) okay all of this is 2017 oh god January Anthem bring back Jeff Jarrett and he brings his boys back like Dutch Mantel March rebrand TNA to impact wrestling to get rid of the Dixie smell in June Jarrett convinces Anthem to merge impact with his own promotion Global Force Wrestling so impact took on the GFW name and green lights. So there was this massive title unification and stuff and extra titles and nobody cared. It was only Jeff Jarrett cares about this. <sighs> so that's that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett has been having alcoholism problems, which became public in the fall when he showed up to AAA as part of a GFW invasion, looking disheveled and drunkenly tossing tortillas out into the crowd. I believe the term you're looking for is off his tits. Triple Mania 25. So the company's now called GFW, and GFW let Jarrett go in October. But shit, they never finalised getting the GFW trademarks from Jarrett in the first place. GFW, GFW. No, sir. We changed back to Impact Wrestling. Oh, my God. Impact Wrestling. <laughs> oh, God. But hang on. Don't your belts still say GFW on them? They did. <laughs> I know where this is going. So, Stephen, the Impact After Bound for Glory, they unveiled the new Impact Wrestling title belts, which is the GFW belt with a big, dirty piece of metal on it that says Impact Wrestling. You wish, mate. It's a sticker. Oh, it's a sticker. It's an Impact Wrestling sticker. However, Steve, it gets better. They forgot to cover up the side plates. And so the side plates still have a big, dirty GFW. And, like, the camera is, like, all up in its grill (laughs) for the entire show. And it's all you can look at. They can't do an outdoor event now. Because they walk out and the fucking sticker (laughs) blow away. Where are the Impact Wrestling? Because you rebranded earlier in the year. Where's those belts? Yeah. Yeah, they could literally just bring them. Oh, they're the Burl's house. (laughs) 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 Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that and are now fully versed in Impact TNA, the company that lived. <laughs> <laughs> the business of professional wrestling is so surreal. Bound for Glory is the biggest pay-per-view of the year. It's an event that I've watched dozens of times. TNA Bound for Glory 2017. Kick off! Grandiose video package talking up Bound for Glory. Combatants give their thoughts on TNA, including Dan Lambert saying, A lot of people turn their heads at a car. <laughs> I love this guy, by the way. He's like the best promo ever. American Top Team? He is the owner of American Top Team, yes. Hype man. Got his, got his fight milk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's November 5th, 2017, from the Aberdeen Pavilion in Ottawa, Canada. And they've made it up to look exactly like the Impact Zone. What's the story? In front of 650 fans, with redacted bites, 
650. They made it look more to me. Yeah, yeah. It's the pinnacle event. TNA's WrestleMania, bound for glory. Commentator tonight are our boy, JB, Jeremy Borash, and nobody's boy, tough enough one loser. <laughs> <laughs> and guy who fights with individual fans on Twitter, Josh Matthews. Yeah, he does himself no favours at all. But in saying that, he's actually not a bad commentator. It's just when he's trying to get himself over, he comes across like a massive cunt. Oh, the show has peaked. Dude with an OSW sign in the crowd. Oh my god. OSW. 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 Did you see it? Yes, at McWhoopin. What an awesome fella. Also, thanks to Travis, who sent me footage from the show. So I'll be spicy, spicy on that later. Nice. But yeah, he was like, I want to get on an OSW. And it's like, you will be, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be front and center. Our inaugural contest is a six-man match for the X Division Championship. Champion Trevor Lee out first. He is a three-time champion, trained by the Hardys in their indie training promotion, Omega. Versus Desmond Xavier, who won this year's X Cup. Versus Garza Jr., the nephew of CMLL's Hector Garza. Do you not have to be someone's son to be junior? Not nephew. Well, maybe his dad has got the same name. Mm. Uh. Or maybe his dad is his uncle. <laughs> oh, un- <laughs> Uncle Father Hector, like... <laughs> Free your mind. The player from the Himalayas, Sanjay Dutt. Yes, Sanjay won the X Division belt for the first time in 2016 in India. That was what? his first time to ever be X Division champion? Yeah. Wow. And fucking Suicide was even X Division champion. It's yeah. one of those things where your boy doesn't get the belt, but everyone else's does. It's like Brian Christopher has never been light heavyweight champion. <laughs> And oh no, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty Too Hotty got it, you know. Yeah. Takamichi got yeah, it, you know. Yeah, versus Matt Seidel, aka Evan Bourne. Remember him? Yeah, Ma- not looking like this. He he's looks he's got rough. No, he's got a, some semblance of a look now, rather than regular looking bloke walks out in fucking wrestling. Pants. <gasps> I'm just talking about like he looks weathered. I will totally get you with the gormless look. Mm. Big bang of motherfucker Mike off this. Cinematic. Yeah, oh, Jay. <laughs> Do you remember he tagged with Kofi Kingston as the altitude error? Uh, that, the, uh, no, were they not error boom? Yes, error boom won that poll. <laughs> it shouldn't have. Altitude error is also an auto great fucking name. Someone take it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he had a horrendous Liz Frank fracture. Broke his foot in four places, oh dislocated God. in five. Like, you usually see that with um, horse riders, you know. Absolutely horrific. Second last out is Canadian Destroyer, P.D. Williams. Yeah! Good to see him back. Who, who looks great yeah. ten years later. Looks about the same. Windsor, Ontario's little P.D. Pum coming out to the Team Canada music draped in a maple leaf flag. Man, those puck slappers love that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I also love the red, white, and red Canadian ropes. Yes. Seidel, he has the J Hunter haircut. Ah. Everybody get some quick flippy whippy in. Garza is selling his shoulder injury and intentionally botches a springboard arm drag. I think he had shoulder surgery only a couple of days before this and should never have been cleared and was cleared. He wasn't selling. Yeah. Fuck. It's like he literally couldn't lift his arm and he shouldn't have even travelled, never mind wrestled. That because I he, was loving his kayfabe. Like. Because he's a bloody good worker. Like um, He wrestled Jomo on the TV show about a week or two earlier and a fucking great match. He's excellent. But that was taped about six weeks earlier. Mm. Sanjay's still amazing and really pops for... Suplex into Powerbomb by Trevor Lee on Sanjay Dutt. Jay, not so fast. Wow! wow. What a power pop. Oh, it's nice. It's like an accordion yeah. plunk there. It was beautiful. Vicious looking, but safe. Crowd are dying for a little PD pump. 
who hits a hot tag code breaker, then a tilt a whirl Russian leg sweep and a self rock bottom. Oh, I have that written down. <laughs> I was like, Petey is so fucking over in his home country until he hits a self rock bottom <laughs> and everyone just turns on him. <laughs> Follows up with a jump to the outside into Hurricane Rana. Oh, thing of beauty. Yeah. Desmond Xavier with a sloppy head scissors in. Great tope outside and spiral tap inside. Mm-hmm. The crowd just want Petey. He applies Brett's sharpshooter and gets a big pop. I love how flippy Xavier is, but Evan Bourne here, he constantly has to adjust to make his moves work. Like, from his scissors kick in, there was a moonsault kick that Xavier did, and Evan Bourne had to kind of walk into it to make sure it connected. Yes. I had actually said Desmond Xavier hadn't seen him before. Uh, He looks fucking awesome. Definitely my cup of tea, this guy. But I didn't notice what the point you're making there, that other people had to make him look as awesome as he is. But in terms of what he can do, I think he's head and shoulders above everyone else in this match. Do you remember um, it, was, it was a couple of episodes ago you were saying, oh my God, just fucking do the Canadian Destroyer. Mr. O.O. Canada gets his wish. Mm. A Canadian Destroyer. But Trevor Carolina Caveman here hooshes him out and reaps the rewards. One, two, three, and retains his X Division belt. Thought it was a fun opener. They just took turns getting their shit in. Crowd loved it. Great mix of kind of 2007 and 2017 talent. So, yeah, you know, thumbs up. Totally. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good match, but considering what we've done in this arc previously, it, it wasn't on that. Oh, forget I about mean, it. Yeah, I mean... Every other era yeah. can forget about it. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I really liked this match. I thought everyone looked good. I've one thing that bugs me. Why did TNA always put this match on first? It's usually the best match of the fucking night. You're peaking your, your fans early and then you have a big fucking slump and then it takes them a long time to kind of pick back up again. I, I like that the way there's a third bit to it, you know. <laughs> just that there's a big slump. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Match number two, it's Tyson Dukes versus pro wrestling Noah's Taiji Ishimori with its presence, Masayuki Uchida. Dukes used to be in Team Canada with Petey Williams, EY and Johnny Devine. You might recognise him from WWE's Cruiserweight Classic in early 2016. Or, if you're hardcore, as a security guard The Undertaker beat up on Smackdown in 2003. Oh yes! Ishimori is the longest reigning GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion, 405 days, and showed up in July with tag partner Marafuji, since TNA and Noah have a working relationship. Straight off the bat, Courtney Love shows up. Oh my god, what's this? So, this match was not meant to be on this card. It wasn't mentioned in the entire build-up. I think they put it on because the Ty of Valkyrie and Rosemary match was cancelled due to visa issues from Taya Valkyrie yes now the thing is she is actually from Canada so she had no problem getting into the country however there may have been big issues to get her back into the US and so TNA said it's not worth the trouble let's leave her in the US so that we can have her back when we go back to tape shit yeah suppose it it is hard to get past the wall you need to get your winter fell as well so (laughs) (laughs) That's fucked. That's yeah. absolutely fucked. Yeah. But TNA, even though we're recording this in November 2017, they've actually declared themselves as a Canadian company. When? Uh, early November 2017. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, they're moving to Canada. Yukon Ho. But Why? What are, what are they moving? Oh, the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's Laurel Van Ness. She completely takes over both our and the director's attention. Uh, do you recognise Chelsea from anything? That's Chelsea. Uh, sorry, yes, uh, bollocks. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's Chelsea from the last season of Tough Enough. Fant- <gasps> She's Daniel Bryan's Claire Lynch. Yes! <laughs> she is the physiotherapist that Daniel Bryan was supposed to cheat on. I believe so, yes. And Stephanie McMahon was like, hey, Bree, he's cheating on you at the physiotherapist. <laughs> <laughs> the 
voice is getting more like Vince's every day. Um. Oh yeah, there's a match on, <laughs> and that's the review. Dukes with a nice strongman delayed suplex, but Ishimori wins with a 450 splash in a fitting four minutes fifty. Ooh, and it's perfect. Yeah, I think okay. it's the most perfect 450 splash I've ever seen. Wow, he's got all of his Dukes in a row. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, that's that then. What <laughs> would you think? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they're both very good, and maybe they had a good match, but I didn't get to see it. Uh, yeah, moving on. Moving on, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Laurel Van Ness here. After her marriage to Braxton Sutter fell through, she started wrestling in a ripped wedding dress, barefoot and smeared makeup. Steve, what do you think? It's hot, isn't it? It's halfway towards a decent gimmick, but it ain't going to get over. I think it's hot. In smeared K-fabe, makeup? She hasn't washed since that wedding. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Promo with Alberto El Patron. See, see, see. Just like Daniel Bryan's yes, 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 but legally distinct, sir. The cheek of him. Why are people cheering for this guy? I bet you he's great to have a point with. Before he does a line and smashes you <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> the former Alberto Del Rio. I love this one time in TNA where he wore his Del Rio jocks. Oh, God. Big ADR on his jocks. <sighs> Could they not have put a big Impact Wrestling <laughs> sticker across <laughs> it, like the belt? Prominent sign in the crowd, you'll never replace the law. It's very true. Fuck Anthem, seriously, the cunts. That's what I have written down there, yeah. <laughs> Um, The worst thing about Anthem buying TNA, which is a massive money loser, is that the company tightened their belts across the board for all of their satellite little companies, including firing many on zero notice at the Fight Network. Everyone at the Law Radio Show. Mm. Fucker sacked Robin Black. He's like the best MMA journalist out there. He's the best at breaking down a fight. And they sacked him. Yeah, cunt TNA couldn't even contain its failures in its own company. Yeah. So you can check out John and Way's Patreon that hopefully have launched by the time this episode comes out. Buy them a pint. Yes. Del Rio, he's back. In pog form. <laughs> <laughs> he was supposed to main event Bound for Glory as champion versus Jeff Jarrett, but got fired instead. Oh, that now that match would have drawn all of the dimes. What happened? Del Rio, he was dating Paige, and the two seem to have a very toxic relationship. This is all over the last year and a half. Mid-2016, Del Rio and Paige started dating. He got hit with a wellness violation and left WWE, then got handed divorce papers for cheating. Paige was hit with two wellness violations, and WWE actually made a point to say that these are illegal drugs, not prescription meds or fuck up with your prescription. Or, yeah, you know, just pushing her under the bus, basically. But they didn't fire her, keeping her on the books so she can't work elsewhere. And she's also recovering from she had a neck injured surgery. her neck. Yeah, yeah. And they're making a movie about her. Yes, they actually filmed parts of it on Raw already. Oh like, my yeah. god. Uh, the Rock has his, he wet his beak in that one. Yeah. Mar- <laughs> Del Rio and Paige got married in October and she got an Alberto tattoo. But I don't know what pay-per-view he reviewed for her, so. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Jay. Lots of bad news reports came out. Paige's family being publicly concerned for her safety with Alberto. The best one, a drunken periscope rant where the two were ballooned off their tits. Del Rio shouting, oh, I want to fight that big nose pussy. Oh, my God. It's amazing. It's like he's 15, you know, and he's 40, you know. You remind me of one of the bosses in WWE with a big fucking nose. Just a big fucking pussy. Uh, Fucking pussy. Del Rio has a habit of no showing events. In April, he missed a What Culture event, despite working the day beforehand. 
missed a AAA event as some guy with a knife allegedly assaulted him outside a restaurant. Oh, oh, I remembered hearing about this, the alleged knifing. And he's like, have a look at my arm. And it's like the neatest, straightest, co- it's very sussy. Oh. Shit, he even missed a Reddit AMA. <laughs> 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 One day after announcing it. Like, what happens in 24 hours, mate? Big- Drugs happen. The biggie was in August. Paige and Del Rio were fighting in the airport. Paige later saying that she was the aggressor. Anyway, the two have split. With Del Rio, TNA fired him as soon as the domestic violence charges were thrown around. But now that's all cleared up and he's back. And even better with Paige. What? Wait a minute! She's back! Oh my god! Paige is back! Ooh, she returned on Raw. She came out during a, I think it was like a triple threat match with Mickey James, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. And she interrupted and introduced two NXT women, Mandy Rose, who was also on Tough Enough, mm-hmm. and Sonya Deville. The MMA chick, put your hair up and square up, which is the worst catchphrase I've ever heard, by the way. Oh, she has a new catchphrase. It's now, I shit you not. And if you don't know, no, oh, yeah, you know. No. no, it's not. Seriously. Oh, yes. Splicey, Stephen. Alberto cuts a generic yes men in the back released me because of false reports and doesn't go into further detail or even mention Paige by name. He basically says, it's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Marx. I can credit Matthew for that one. I don't get why he's over in general, though. Like, you good looking bloke, tall bloke, ethnic, you know, great US champion. But, like, where's your promos or your great wrestling skills to elevate yeah. you above that? You know? Yeah. Who will pay to see you? No one. Uh, who will pay to see him talking for 15 minutes or whinging, giving <laughs> yeah. out for 15 minutes? I, what are they going for here? Is this kind of like the work shoot kind of Paul Heyman one night stand jobby, is it? Did you enjoy it? No, because it was obviously a work. He challenges the paper champion to prove his worth, complains about cowards, losers, backstabbers, and calls out the golden goose, JB, representing the company. He teases assaulting JB for a bit, but ultimately doesn't and kind of just goes away a bit and gets booed. Like, he basically just goes, why didn't you call me? And JB is like, no one likes you. (laughs) And, And that's it. That's the payoff to this. 20 minute segment. He's like, can I get your number now? Five, five, five. All the three. He's got to put them in or it won't work. <laughs> Backstage, Abyss confronts Grado. There is no Joseph here. Because it's time for the Monsters Ball. It's Abyss versus Grado. After nine years wrestling as the Monster Abyss, he had a new gimmick as Abyss's brother, Joseph Park, an attorney who was looking for his missing brother. It was fantastic. You had no idea you were missing this kind of freshness and range without the mask. Had no clue that he was capable of doing this. Like He's brilliant at it. And I love Joseph Park. Yes, he's a soft-spoken, scaredy-cat coward, which is hilarious given his size. Yeah. It morphed into a split personality gimmick where he doesn't know he's Abyss, and the sight of blood would make him enraged and turn into the monster. So these days he goes between both characters. He had a fun match tagging with JB against Josh Matthews and Scott Steiner at Slammiversary in July, where Sinister Minister helped him transform into Abyss. There was an amazing build where JB and Park, they watch uh, Scott Steiner promos on their laptop. Steiner starts cutting, oh, you fired us! I'm going to get on. Oh, <laughs> and they start cutting a promo on them. Everybody knows how much I hate that <laughs> You're a lawyer with the fat... But what's all this malarkey with Grado? He's from Scotland. He needs a visa to continue wrestling in TNA. And Joe Park offered him one if he worked for him at Park Park and Park. Uh, yeah, where are all these parks coming from? It's great. Probably from Korea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but he heelishly pissed away most of Grado's earnings, causing dissension. 
Smellness. So the two will fight with Grado's visa on the line. This is a monster's ball match. Click Doomsday. Abyss is billed at six foot eight inches and three hundred and fifty plus pounds. That's disconcertingly vague. <laughs> Like Michael Buffer, he's always buying around 271 and 3 eighths pounds. Oh my god. Grado! ICW's crown jewel. It's kind of sad to see him. He's so much lower stock in oh. TNA. Like, he was a f- fucking megastar in Scotland. And in here, he's just some act that isn't over. Like, But, you know, he's a bigger star for being in TNA. And he'll be a megastar whenever he goes back to ICW. Absolutely. His entrance in ICW is amazing. He's so over. They love him. They adore him. You get on board very quickly. Yeah. yeah. He even landed a role as Buster in River City. And he's also in Scott Squad. Splicey. Nice. We've been caught parked in a double yellow line while we were inside. Yes, it was wrong. It has ended up in the front page of the local paper. Dance distraction and kick off with a kick in the balls. Sunset flip and a low No! A staple gun into the forehead. Ugh. It's effective. <laughs> cheese grater to the balls. Grating some nice Stilton cheese. <laughs> Abyss throws a bin at Grado, knocking him off the top rope and through a barbed wire board. Nice. Which I believe he spent ages trying to set up, then to only realise that the gap between the barricade and the ring is too big, and then he had to pull the barricade out to make it fit, and then he realised that he was on the opposite side, so he had to lift up the barbed wire, go on to the opposite side and reset it. Do you like Janice, the two by four now? I think it looks cool. I think it's funny that it's named after Dixie's mom, but I hate the fact that it can never, ever, ever be used in a spot. Well, it can, but you have to kind of, you know, kind of poke somebody mm. with it. Rather it's like than when use Triple it. H has yeah. the sledgehammer and he, <laughs> and he muggles it. Oh. Yeah, it's like, fuck off. Like. It's so cheap <laughs> yeah. and shitty, yeah. you know? Like, at least with kendo sticks, you can actually use them properly. Yeah. Grado with a test big boot and abyss falls. <laughs> Grado and a test big boot in the same sentence. <laughs> oh, Jay, you are putting this man over. <laughs> and abyss falls into a barbed wire board. Grado sandwiches him in between another and does a scaredy cat top rope splash. Grado had an awful time climbing up to the top rope. Uh, what you, that's his thing though what, oh is he supposed to this is the one match he's supposed to now get real serious and- he's fighting for his right to party in the USA hmm. holy shit this match has no heat it immediately went into prop brawling and Laurel Van Nass stumbles into the ring and hits an unprettier on Grado see Grado needed a green card and she said she'd marry him he rebuffed her as she's Canadian and TNA are American, sending her back to the bottle. But TNA are now Canadian. They're now Canadian. So <laughs> oh, fuck. You fucked up. You <laughs> fucked up. TNA's timekeeper doesn't know the finish of this match and prematurely rings the fucking bell. Oh. He had no idea what he was doing. School Roll boy. Up. Not enough. He knew he- no. But it was the wrong guy who got the pin. Yes. Yeah. Ugh. Literally, you had one job. (laughs) Lights out. It's Sting. You wish, mate. (laughs) It's Rosemary, who looks fucking awesome, by the way. Yeah, she looks really cool. So cool. She used to be in Decay with Abyss, and she also played Witch Bitch in Monster Brawl. Oh, my God. With uh, Jimmy Hart and Kevin Nash. We have to see this movie at some point. We should definitely review it. Yes. No, 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 no. No, Fuck's sake, two attempts of a black hole slam. Slice of ham. And Abyss gets the win in 1040. It was so sad. It was so bad. Grado, he sandbagged the shit out of Abyss and it was terrible. 
Carolina walked into the room during this match. She was like, Oh, this guy with the mask looks kind of cool. I think I'll sit down and watch it. I was like, oh, please don't. Do you not have something to do? Do you want to, you know? Do you not have floors to clean? (laughs) (laughs) And she'd sat down and watched it and I was red faced. This is the worst of wrestling. It wasn't even so bad that I had some fun watching it. It was just all bad. Um, Shame. 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 (laughs) Yep, I didn't expect it to be good, but it was below expectations. Although I wouldn't have been embarrassed watching it. I'm way past being embarrassed watching wrestling. If someone else who doesn't watch wrestling comes in? Yeah, because that's kind of part of who I am. (laughs) (laughs) An embarrassment. (laughs) Get off me! Grand Champion and Noah Champion are with James Storm, and I, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> James Storm just blew my eardrums. Oh my god. He's screaming his promo, and the fucking PA system is having a stroke live on TV. I don't want Canada! Let me hear you, baby! Huh? What does he say? Did you. I, 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 I just. Just... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Six man tag. It's Team Impact versus Team Triple A. EC3, Eddie Edwards and Cowboy James Storm versus El Hijo de Fantasma, Pagano and Tejano. An international turf war for bragging rights, Stephen. So EC3, Eddie Edwards, both have separate belts. Do you know what the belts are? I do, but why don't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, Just make sure you I'm know. I'm testing you, V1. So, EC3 has the Impact Grand Championship. Which was a made-up belt that Billy Corgan came up with when he joined TNA. To win this belt, you had to take part in like mixed MMA wrestling hybrid matches, which were round-based, and they had people judging them. You had to wrestle in a round basin. You had to wrestle. It was Yama pit fighting. I love it. The <laughs> Super Bowl. Minus the Yama pit fighting guy. He's the worst uh, announcer I've ever heard. Dr. No. Vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen in the house and on pay-per-view, welcome to the beautiful Mark Estes. So yes, it was like a made-up hybrid MMA wrestling belt that has over time just turned into their IC belt. And Eddie Edwards, I believe, is the NOAA world champion. Is it a GHC world champion? That's it, champion? Very good. I would argue that's a little bit higher on the totem pole. Phantasma, son of the ghost, is the masked bloke. Is the masked <laughs> bloke. <laughs> Pagano's the psycho clown, not to be confused with the wrestler psycho clown. And Tejano, you might know from Lucha Underground, feuded with El Chav Guerrero and lost to Del Rio in a bull rope match. He's a decent worker. EC3, Ethan Carter III, lol, another Dixie Carter reference. It's great. Her kayfabe nephew. I don't know why WWE released him. Like, he was the funniest thing about NXT Season 4. He's jacked, great personality. Yep. Charisma. Yep. Chicks in America. Derek Bateman. Yes, very good. Uh, There was a great bit on NXT where the rookies had to guess the pro wrestler's answer. And beforehand, himself and Daniel Bryan just learnt off words to repeat so they could win. And it made no sense because they didn't know what questions they'd be asking. So it's like, when I first saw my rookie, I thought he was blank. And I was like, I believe it was the great city of Tulsa, Oklahoma. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that sounds really good. And Brian would be like, that's that's what I wrote. That's what I wrote. But to splice you, that that sounds hilarious. What does Daniel think you can improve on the most? (laughs) Well, two of my favorite things, actually, chicks and America. So you can improve on chicks in America. <laughs> Derek Bateman, so if you wanted to be an actor, what would you be if you weren't a wrestler? And I was like, I think I would be the next Steve Blackman. <laughs> <laughs> the next Steve Blackman! 
<laughs> ten on ten. Steve. Yo. Who is Eddie Edwards? He is a wrestler. Yes. Uh, he used to be in the American Wolves. Excellent with the uh, fucking wolf pelt. Yeah. From IKEA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really super fucking worker. I think he's a former Ring of Honor champion as well. Uh, he used to be in much better shape, and I always thought he was the lesser of the worker between himself and Davy Richards, but he's still really talented, really good. How was he character promo wise? Better than Roderick Strong? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> He's okay. He's Johnny Bland wrestler, but he's fine. And cowboy James Storm, who's awesome. Fuck, seeing James Storm back in TNA. Didn't you go to NXT in 2015? He fucking did. TNA offered him a big deal on the promise of another beer money run, so he took it. And himself and Rude won the belts March 8th. Just over three weeks later, Bobby Roode was in NXT with a massive push, a glorious debut, won the title and moved to SmackDown after SummerSlam. And James, you can hang out with Bram. (laughs) (laughs) Poor guy. I mean, like, he was already in the promised ground. He was there. He was the next Braden Walker. (laughs) (laughs) And he sold it all. Sold it all for nothing. I think TNA sold him who will put you with Bobby Roode, not knowing that his contract is up in two months. Or knowing but failing to mention type of deal. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Bobby Roode is like, oh, there's a spot in NXT that just opened up. <laughs> what are the chances? <laughs> well, it's not the worst because they would have given him a lot of money to come back. And he's in Orlando. He only works a couple of days a month as well. So That is true. Like, I imagine okay. he's one of the highest paid people still there, you know? I, ho- I hope he's the highest. Him and Christy Hemi. <laughs> 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 Fans enjoy it from all over the globe, seeing great action, whether it's Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan or the crash in Tijuana, Mexico. It's deathly quiet, so JB plugs their Twitter hashtag. Then I notice that TNA don't sully their screen at all. There's no hashtag, no logo, no live logo. It's just a clean image. Is that a good or a bad thing? I'm thinking if they don't put their own watermarks on it, people might think maybe it's WWE. What? What just for a bit? Oh my god! Oh, I didn't know WWE were on pop TV. <laughs> <laughs> Storm gets the hot tag. Inseguri from the outside throws Tejano into Phantasma for a neckbreaker DDT combo. Awesome! Woo! Here comes Tejano. Storm. Great move. Pagano, you know who he fought at last year's Triple Mania? Junior Macias. Oh, oh I'm sure that match was bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, like he was no good in 2007. Yeah, man, this uh, guy here, he is not a smooth, talented wrestler. He, He's no Santana. <laughs> he hits a very terrible looking short arm clothesline and then hits the worst kick to a downed wrestler I've ever seen. It's the nothing. State of your kick, mate. Go home. Yeah, it was a JB, I think, says, ah, the unique offense. (laughs) (laughs) Bowling (laughs) shoe. Unique or quite? Oh, no, he doesn't make that much because I am always listening. (laughs) But, I mean, ultimately, he's just kind of bum shuffles into Storm a few times, flops over the top rope to the floor, just a lump of a man. He's like, you know, this is what they got. This is the best they can come up with. Every person in this match takes turns running the ropes, doing a dive. Eddie Edwards does a dive. Even James Storm does a dive. Pagano. <laughs> <laughs> so he runs up. He builds up ahead of steam. He builds up ahead of steam. Throws himself at the ropes. He can't jump over the ropes. And James Storm, who is lying on his back, has to help him over the top by kicking him over. Oh, God. It's so bad. Your main event, ladies and gentlemen. Tejano eats an Alabama slam. (laughs) An EC3 hot tag. And he considers and does a warrior rope shake. Lovely Tower of Doom, Pyramid Powerbomb, and everybody's down. Eddie Edwards and Phantasma teeter on the ring apron, considering a double underhook powerbomb. And it's reversed into a tombstone? Oh, shit! 
Oh, it's actually safe. Whew. Yeah. Whew. Whew. EC3 with a double. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> we can say that now and it doesn't mean anything. It's yeah. great. Nice. Double one percenters. Tejano doesn't even cane bump. He just like rolls out. <laughs> The baby faces stomp, clap, stomp, stomp clap. clap. EC3 tags in storm, last called super kick, and one, two, three, clean pin, and team TNA win. And that's that, Mrs. That's that. Faces win in 1530, and they close about with EC3's incredible roid back knee. He gross is ginormous. Like he was a big jack dude back in NXT season four, but now he's scary roidy monster. Got those fucking little volcanoes on his back, like... <laughs> Going, hello, hello! <laughs> <laughs> Things fucking chatting to you and everything. Yeah, I just can't get into these kind of interpromotional feuds. I know WWE was doing it with the SmackDown versus Raw this month, weren't they? Well, in November 2017. In November. Um, this means nothing to anyone. Well, none of this means nothing to okay, anyone. Okay, all right. I mean, <laughs> the whole fucking lot of it means nothing. But if it did mean something, this still wouldn't mean anything. <laughs> And, you know, I'd, not that I'm a great follower of tri- AAA or AAA mm-hmm. AAA. Yeah. It just goes to <laughs> show that I'm the not great. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know who these lads are. I, I wager that most people don't know who these lads are and don't care who these lads are. So they oh, make- you are going to make two or three people <laughs> furious. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Phantasm <laughs> is uh, the originator of the schoolboy. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Team. Backstage promo with global champ Eli Drake and Chris Adonis. Chris Masters banging on about John Morrison. Just need Carlito to make this Mm. 2007. (laughs) Honestly, Drake is a very good talker. He's clearly a big fan of the fucking Roth. (laughs) (laughs) You got this written down. I mean, he, you know, I don't want to say rip off, but he's ripped him off. But he's very good. He is. The namer of dummies, the man with the undeniable Kavorka, and a perpetual motion machine of badassery that they call Eli Drake. It's his cadence as well, it's straight out of Attitude Era. It's totally from it, yeah. But how he does his promos are always excellent. Uh, Can I also say, this guy is another one of those guys whose face just bugs me. His mouth is enormous and he looks like one of the Goombas from the Super Mario live oh. movie. <laughs> Eating an apple through a letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's halfway point of the show. It's time for the Outbreak Questionarium. <laughs> Westway's being slammed by huge snails. We'll slash prices to sell our snail slime cars and trucks. We'll mark them with an S. Like this Festiva for $139 a month or Escort, number one car in the world. All S cars must go. Anyone who can make an S car go gets free uh, snail pellets during Westway Ford snail damage sale at... Ba ba Westway Ford. Oh, see, you know how you're always bragging that you can spot a lesbian? <laughs> Your actress mate who played Lala on the Teletubbies, remember we were talking about that? Yeah. Did you know that Per did lesbian porn? Get I out of here. did not. Scissor me timbers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had a sex scene in metrosexuality. Bit of a splicey there, Jim. No splicey, Steve. Well, I can splice like, you around it, you know. Yeah, like, I'm not, you know. I'll I'd... put a gooker face on the tits or something, have it done. Yeah. Why are you so negative about trees, Next up, it's the 5150 Street Fight, Ohio versus Everything versus the Latin <laughs> American Exchange. <laughs> it's a hardcore match, but instead of Abyss's tables and barbed wire, it's tables and chains. LAX, Homicide and Conan just came back to TNA in March, expanding their crew with Ortiz, Santana and Diamant, feuding with Abyss's faction Decay and anyone without a better program. Where's Hernandez? 
<laughs> on the shit list is right. <laughs> in 2016 he signed with TNA despite never being released from Lucha Underground so they threatened to sue TNA if they used footage with him in it so entire segments in his new crew the beatdown clan cut from TV wow LAX are facing OVE aka the Irish Airborne I don't think they've ever been to Ireland though <laughs> I remember watching these in Ring of Honor like 10 fucking years ago they're very good Jake is the blonde one and Dave has brown hair they do have an amazing double team finisher diving stomp to the arse and spike pile driver called the Irish Coffee oh <laughs> cut that <laughs> Wow, they must be huge fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, motionless, cut to the back where an LAX member, presumably Homicide, is downed. Fucking hell, you know, he's motion. He's just like completely dead. Do you know what sucks? These fuckers in the build-up to this match told us Homicide was going to be here, basically because the rule of the 5150 is anyone can wrestle in this, so you can have 50 people versus 120 people. They fucking lied. Stereo, bowl over Tope con Hilo to kick off. Immediate brawl to the outside. Ortiz does a jumping powerbomb off the stage through a table, which looked like part of the set. I thought it was really nice. This is an insane spot, especially because Ortiz was walking over a t-shirt or some item of clothing, which he could have easily slipped on. Oh, oh Jesus. Scary stuff. Did you notice that Jay Christ getting the Jay Hunter special over... <laughs> A fucking waistcoat, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He, he's just, he's just, he just started knocking on the boys' table there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just at the, at the clubhouse, you know? <laughs> Jake sets up a bed of chairs, and he who sets it up must go through it. Massive superplex, but he misjudges it completely and takes the entire of the chair bump. He landed right on the bottom of his back. It's like, ah, man, ow. Gorgeous street sweeper, which is a powerbomb and somersault neckbreaker combo to Jake. But Dave breaks it up. Oh, do you enjoy the dub spot? I have it written down (gasps) here. Yeah. Double big boot and everyone take a rest and work out the final spots. Oh, I noticed TNA are now showing some replays. Not enough, but I think we got a replay of the big powerbomb spot off the stage. There was an incredible frog splash by Santana onto Dave through a table. That was pretty awesome as well. So there's a couple of good spots. Yeah! Jay Christ throws a chair right onto Ortiz's head. Fucking clatters him. Freedom powder to Conan. Who's that jumping in the boat? <laughs> <laughs> it's Sammy Callahan. Debuting here, fresh off the boat from Lucha Underground. You might remember him as Solomon Crow in NXT. Cool name, never went anywhere. He looks a lot bigger here than he does in WWE. Holy shit, this guy is big. In NXT, he had this nice, weird-looking bounce splash where you go, woo, and splash (laughs) on the ground. I like it. Oh my god. I've never heard such a flat response to a fucking jumping pile driver through a table. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Nothing. Family to OVE and boom! That's okay. Sammy Callahan's boys OVE pick up the win and retain their tag belts in 1035. Did you notice that when Dave Christ made the pin, he cradled them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lifted up the shoulder. Excellent. And the referee just had to act like it didn't happen. This was one of the better plunder matches I've seen in a long time. The guys worked really hard and they won me over and I quite enjoyed it. Um, No one is over in this company. Maybe Gail Kim. James Storm. Uh, Mm -hmm. EC3? EC3 is over. Uh, Like... It's a very small list, and I think I'd argue that it's getting smaller and smaller and sadder. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like these guys are killing each other in this, and the fans are, uh, you know, yeah. And this this is really good. It's a exceptionally no, that's too much. Of a, that's too strong a word. It's a mildly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a above average brawl. 
some really cool spots and yet the fans don't give a fuck. This is the first time I've seen OVE. Really impressed with these lads. Pretty good gimmick. Kind of the mask thing going on and all that. Yeah, um, I actually thought the match was great. They just went spot to spot to spot, so very little time wasted. V1 had your favourite spot when Ortiz was getting the table. The crowd started chanting, we want tables. <laughs> oh, <I> just... <laughs> he should just put it back under the ring and be like, <laughs> Kofi, you were fucking getting them. Be fucking patient. Rude Canadians, but well, I never... <laughs> Match number six is a triple threat for the Knockouts Championship. Backstage with reporter Mackenzie. It's Gail Kim. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? Very obvious. She's gotten work done. Her journey to becoming a cat lady is underway. It's such a shame because she's naturally very pretty. She's very good looking. She says it's not the time for nerves as this pay-per-view 10 years ago she won the Knockouts title, episode 66. Thanks, Gail. (laughs) (laughs) It's Knockouts champion Sienna out first and I'm enjoying her sparkly peacock gear. Versus Ali, aka Laura, aka Cherry Bomb. She's kind of playing the lovable doofus kind of Emma in NXT gimmick. I'd say that she's playing a mix between Emma and Bailey. I think she does a really good job. Yes, and Gail Kim outlast, who said this is her retirement match, win or lose. We cut to Santino Morella, probably waiting for Cornette to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Slap the taste out of his <laughs> mouth again. Cornette cussed him out at a convention recently, October 2017, stemming from Cornette being fired from OVW in 2005. So what happened is Boogeyman did his entrance, Santino and his daughter were in the crowd as guests. Boogeyman came over, oh, woogie, boogie, boogie, you know, and, you know, they all ran out screaming, eh. and Cornette pulled Santino aside, thought he was laughing, being unprofessional, and just slapped the shit out of him. It's disgraceful. And, of course, he got canned for that. Rightfully so. Yes. But these days, like, Cornette, like, he just goes off on everyone. So you, is this for your podcast? It, it, it's a gimmick. Yeah, you know, I, like, I've watched it and I thought that Corelli was egging him on. It was like he wanted him to hit him again. Uh, so I do believe that he's just as much at fault in this case. But it all boils down to the fact that Cornette slapped the shit out of him a number of years ago. He should have had the bollocks knocked out of him. Like, how dare he do that? Actually, Jim Cornette had just been hired by TNA as an authority figure in August. Hilarious, as he has the botchamania fuck this company face on his (laughs) Titantron. (laughs) But since he had assault records, he couldn't cross into Canada and do Bound for Glory or the TV tapings following. So he's just done. So they just let him go? That's that. Oh, wow. Yeah, because he was on a couple of weeks of the build-up and then just magically disappeared. And who's back? Dirty Dutch is back. It's very strange. That said, it was always going to be a transitional gimmick until Jarrett gets back on TV, but he's out. So oh, I my died. God. This company. TNA, TNA, <laughs> TNA. Did you know this match for three weeks of the build was built up as a fatal four-way match? Oh, who was the fourth uh, person, Stephen? Taryn Terrell. Who, by the way, holy fuck, is she hot. She's... Whenever you say Taryn Terrell, I think of two things. One of them is that amazing match she had with Gail Kim. Yeah. Uh, where she does that big dive spot to the outside. And the other one is she was giving out about Drew McIntyre, saying he was a big knacker that didn't wash his ass. And it was like, she he wanted her to eat out his ass. But he had dingleberries. <laughs> <laughs> For like the first two or three weeks, this match is pretty much all built around her. She's the main heel and she's the one who's getting all of the heat. And then just magically in like week four, she's gone from TV. And then the bill kind of turns into Gail Kim. And Taryn has never spoken about it ever again. Kick off. Sienna does a double camel clutch deal, which I very much enjoyed. <laughs> During this spot, the commentator is like, well... Sienna does practice MMA and that's where she's learned this move. I'm like, how many two-on-one matches have you ever seen in MMA, Josh? (laughs) What's that um, random fed where it's like... The fucking Polish five-on-five fed? Yeah, yeah, it's the Survivor (gasps) Series of MMA. (laughs) Steve, 
it's gross when like one person is out, then you start getting two on one team ups and three on one team ups. It's disgusting. But it's it's like whoever's out first, you, your team is gonna lose. Pretty much, yeah. It's jumpers for goalposts. It sounds yeah. amazing. <laughs> Ali does a spot where she keeps running into Gale into the corner. She runs with her arms up like it's like a chicken run, you know. <laughs> you know. She gets hooshed out Hernandez style. Sienna follows up with a dangerous second rope follow-away slam. A breath dangerous rope. And Spinebusters Gale, piling her onto Ali. She tries to pin Gale, but Smart Ref says her shoulders aren't down, so she has to try and pin Ali instead. The rules! <laughs> Sienna, whose gimmicks that she's meant to be a big kind of power wrestler and a beast, she has an awful lot of trouble lifting up Ali. Time for the finish. Please help me, I can't lift you up. <laughs> and dump Ali over the top rope. And Canadian Gale hits Eat the Feet, and that does it. Gale wins the Knockout Championship. This is her last match, going out on top. And... Just like in 2007, winning the Knockouts belt, she celebrates for 15 seconds and we go to the back. I have the exact same thing written here. This is her last ever match. TNA's greatest ever women's wrestler. I'd argue one of their greatest ever wrestlers overall. Give her 30 seconds to fucking bask in the no heat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a shame where this division has come from. 10 years ago, it was revolutionising. Mm female wrestling and now it's way behind what WWE are doing absolutely congratulations Gail Kim the unprettier from Laurel up the top rope Van Ness has the cover and is our new knockout champion What transition do we get? Josh is like, who's that over there? (laughs) Oh, God. Cringe. It's Jimmy Jacobs, the princess, because he gets what he wants. A few people, literally three people, chant too sweet. Josh Matthews gets his selfie, which is a perfect reference to why Jimmy Jacobs was let go. So he's an agent uh, working backstage in WWE. Bullet Club did this thing where they came outside Raw and they rallied the crowd and stuff like that. And he came out to say hello to his mates, got a picture, you know, with um, Young Bucks posted on social media. And WWE said, right, fucking get out. And that was it. Yeah, but uh, posting a picture of him with a bunch of blokes... He's behind the camera, so he's never who cares? been on WWE TV. Yeah. yeah. I just have to say that I love Jimmy Jacobs, especially in his WSX gimmick with Tyler Black. He was great. Seth Rollins. They were doing the um, metal guy and the <laughs> flower <laughs> <Fairy>? guy. <laughs> yeah, it is a bitch. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and his run in ROH was he he's a really talented wrestler. Isn't that nice, dude? Chill, bro. See? I hate 70s! Our penultimate contest is the Six Sides of Steel tag match with MMA lads. ATT American top teams Bobby Lashley and King Mo versus Stefan Bonner and Moose. Oh my god, Steve, did you like the V1 sex noise they employ in this promo package? The sex noise? There's like... (laughs) (laughs) We are going to expose professional wrestling for the fraud that it is. Dan Lambert, are you a fan? Massive fan. He's the best talker in this company, without doubt. He cuts the best promos, has a cool faction. This has been the best build feud on this show, and he's been money... Every single week. Did you enjoy his do a real sport like MMA? Yeah. Oh, it's heat. great. It's great. It's all cheap heat. But this guy is a huge wrestling fan and he knows exactly what to say to like get the maximum heat from wrestling fans. Steve, tell me about the build. The Gilles the Builder. <laughs> it's been mostly pre-taped video packages. Kicked off with uh, Moose being very angry. Bursts his way into the American top team cage. Starts picking a fight with people. King, Mo knocks him out. Leaves him for fucking dead. The next week, on the phone, 
We don't know who it is. They're like, next week we're going to meet up and we're going to march back into ATT and we're going to cause shit. So then the following week, we finally see that it's Bonner. Bonner and Moose show up late at night when all of the <laughs> MMA fighters are fucking gone. These two baby faces then take out baseball bats and smash up the place and then rob all of their world championships that their uh, guys have earned. Then the next week, ATT and Dan Lambert show up at the uh, ring. Dan Lambert cuts an amazing scathing heel promo. Then he takes out all these old belts. Hey, wrestling fans, you're all smart fans, right? Well, do you know what this is? No, you don't. This is the 1979 Western Stage Heritage Champion that (laughs) Ric Flair won. And what about this belt? Do you know what this belt is? No, because you're marks. And this means more than all these TNA belts, these pieces of metal and all this shit. And so then he challenges Moose and Bonner to a match. Awesome. Sounds great. It was a great build-up. Dan Lambert is money. You're the real pro wrestling fans. I'm sure you know the Road Warriors. What was the first championship they ever held? No answer? I didn't think so, so let me show you. The Road Warriors held the National Tag Team Championship, Georgia Championship Wrestling, 1983. You see the little crack side plate? That means it was Hawks, but I'm sure you guys already knew that. It makes sense that the MMA fighters would be in a cage, so it's the six sides of steel, TNA's cage match. Oh my god, Moose using his brother Quinn's music. I hate people who lip sync a performance. Just don't show up if you don't want to perform. It's embarrassing, isn't it? I'll meet you halfway, just sing the chorus. Heel heat here. You know? Yes. You know the name you see his name. Lasher's the only proper wrestler here. Moose made his wrestling debut three years ago, and King Mo and Bonner have very limited experience, and that's being kind. Moose jumps the gun with his spot, has to stop himself for Lasher to turn around so he can dropkick him. Jesus Christ. Mm. Lasher does moves as Stefan Bonner just has a nice sit down, he just looks on, right in front of the hard camera. Oh, he's fucking gawking. So, for the rest of the match, I'm just looking at him now. (laughs) And he's much more stealthy taking a break. Like, he's got to lie on his side and just cover his face. (laughs) A small, like, aesthetic thing. It annoys me that King Mo isn't the one in gold. It's Moose. Yeah. King Mo and Stefan do a... Or do people usually call him Bonner or Stefan or what? Ah, Bonner. It's like... um, Mike Adam Lee when he was like, oh, CM with the elbow. CM. <laughs> King Mo and Stefan do a worked MMA spot. Uh, what do you think of that? It's very tough to work shoot moves. Like, it just looks like it's fake and they're fucking helping each other and these moves aren't tight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you lads would be all over this considering the Trig and uh, AJ match. I thought you would be fucking, <laughs> like, couldn't wait for this thing. It's not terrible, but I want to watch wrestling. I don't want to watch MMA. If I want to watch MMA, I would. Yeah. Omoplata by Bonner and ADT bail in, including, well, I guess it's the second worst kick ever kicked. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, Josh Hartnett. He just goes, eh. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, it killed Kefe, you know, because it's supposed it's to be a beatdown, you know? Oh, it's so bad. Josh gets a big top rope choke bomb as a receipt. That looked awesome. Lambert locks Moose on the outside so they can take out Bonner by himself. This is his big hero spot and they try feed for him, but it's really shit. People have to literally stop and wait to attack him. Finish of the match. Moose climbs in. Moo. (laughs) Er, Are you... Booing or mooing? <laughs> Are you ever saying moo earns? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Jay. <laughs> All for naught, big ass spear by the lasher, and he gets the victory. The numbers game win after 10.40, as a recovered Josh Hartnett does a Quake Muffin gun show. Yeah. Uh, Do you enjoy this one? 
it was very messy. At times, it was very sloppy. Very pale as well. <laughs> <laughs> Quite esky at times. <laughs> um, they tried really hard. They pushed Moose well. He did his like choke bomb off the top rope, which for me was the move of the match. Uh, he had his big splash off the top of the cage, which got as big a pop as you're going to get seven matches deep into this card with 650 fans. I think Lasher's great. Hopefully he one day goes back to the WWE because he's so much better now than he was then. Like he looks better, he's a better worker, and he's a significantly better talker. And build up to him against Brock. Obviously bollocks with so many non-wrestlers there, but I thought this was my most enjoyable match on the card and uh, had a great build up too. Yeah, new boy in Dan Lambert here. He's oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a strange match. Couldn't get into it at all. Bobo looking well. Moose, his splash. It's got very little reaction, but Josh Matthews called it a bound for glory moment before it even <laughs> happened. You know, <sighs> don't you tell me what a bound for glory moment is. Only yeah. Gully Bully can have a <laughs> about the moments <laughs> of the moments. <laughs> Any of you morons ever heard of them? That's a bald faced lie, Piggy! I will not stand around while you do dumb things like that, Piggy! John Morrison's backstage. What are you talking about? All he's given up to get there, including his Friday nights where he could have gone to the gym, <laughs> which is hilarious because he's ripped, and says his dad will be proud, who tell him it's never too late to go to law school. What a burial of this company, eh? <laughs> but all he's invested will pay off. And then at one point he name drops Ottawa and looks around, waiting for the crowd to pop. And I don't, maybe they did pop, we just didn't hear it coming through. Maybe they <laughs> did pop. That must be it. <laughs> uh, it was the really <laughs> mad acoustics in this place. It didn't pop, someone just slowly let the air out. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight, right here in Ottawa, Canada... Championship. Johnny Impact challenges the champion, Eli Drake. It's your main event for the Impact Global Championship from Slamtown, USA. <laughs> That's where he's from. Yeah. <laughs> it's Johnny Impact versus champion Eli Drake. Holy shit, this was supposed to be Alberto Del Rio versus Jeff Jarrett. Oh. Which crumpled entirely. With champion Del Rio gone, they held a 20-man gauntlet match in August, which Eli Drake picked up. And he's facing Johnny Impact. State of your name, mate. Oh, yeah. hey, at least he's consistent. Well, you know, he was Johnny Nitro. He should have been Johnny Raw. Jesus, he was... <laughs> <laughs> This ain't no Maybelline. <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> John Hennigan showed up in Tough Enough 3, got a trip to OVW instead, debuted on Raw in 2004 as Eric Bischoff's assistant, Johnny Blaze. Nay, Johnny Spade. Nay, Johnny Nitro, which finally stuck. He even started using the old WCW Monday Nitro song, went back to OVW and joined Melina and Joey Mercury to form Eminem. A heel Hollywood starlet tag team. Got three tag titles with Eminem, but generally got into shit because real life girlfriend Melina was always causing shit. The worst rumor being that she cooked on him with Batista while he was still married. Holy shit. But uh, Mick Foley sticks up for her, so, you know. Repackaged as Jim Morrison like John Morrison in ECW, the shaman of sexy, he replaced Chris Benoit at. Night of Champions 2007. Excellent. And he beat CM Punk. Suspended for smellness. <laughs> no! Come <laughs> off it. <laughs> Never. But he returned on SmackDown instead, having a pretty great run teaming with The Miz, and they had their dirt sheet segment. Game start. Game on. That's what I said. Game over. I don't drink or smoke or hang out with women. 
never rose above icy title status. His promos were lacking and character felt kind of forced, despite having some seriously impressive athleticism. Included his 2011 rumble spot, where he was knocked off the apron, but Cat leaped onto the barricade. He held on and he worked his way up and tightrope walked down and jumped back onto the steps. It was great. Re-entered. Yeah. Amazing. Book it, Dano. Fucking incredible. Bit of injury, bit of creative frustration, he left WWE at the end of 2011. He'd work all over the indies, including Carlito in FEW. Then in Lucha Underground as Johnny Mundo. Johnny World, if you will. John World. (laughs) (laughs) John World! (laughs) In Lucha Underground, he'd take on Hernandez. AAA, including beating Fantasma in a TLC match. What culture... Fucking Del Rio no-showed their match. Oh, my God. And finally joined TNA in August, three months ago. He was fast-tracked into a feud with world champion Eli Drake. So here we go. Johnny Impact. He faces the most electrifying man in copyright history today. (laughs) (laughs) Eli Drake. (laughs) You prick. Oh, my God. JB says you won't find Johnny Mundo's offense anywhere else, except for Lucha Underground, AAA, every <laughs> time. Pull Drake out to the outside and splatting elbow. Oh, hilarious. We get to see fans wearing t-shirts of more successful companies. <laughs> Why do they do that? It's very mean to go to yeah. a lower company. Exactly. And it's wear... okay the other way around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A Mankind tee. A Bullet Club tee. Uh, we didn't see any TNA tees. Have you seen their merch stand? Oh my god. Holy, it's like one table and a hoarding with like four shirts on it. And you are forgetting the most important thing. No customers. They were it was surrounded by uh, all of their fans. <laughs> oh. This is what happens when supply meets demand. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and who's got a t-shirt then? Because I didn't see any t-shirts on any of the wrestlers. Eli Drake, during the build to this, was wearing shirts but I'm pretty sure they were his own shirts that he had made because there was no TNA or Impact on it. And I'm like, oh, you, you're getting your own T-shirts made. Did he not, like, uh, when he, ever he's walking to the ring, there's, like, a TNA official and he gets the sticker and he just slaps it on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a TNA shirt now. <laughs> Nitro is thrown into the barricade and slides underneath and disappears. Awesome. That was one of my favourite spots of the entire night. What a trick. What an awesome athlete to be able to do that shit. He is. Down the rabbit hole. He follows up with a jumping clothesline and kindly tilting his head back for a Drake neckbreaker. He goes like... "Eh." (laughs) Sunset flip. Morrison uh, holds on. Back flips to his feet, but eats an elbow and lovely moonsault. Morrison's still really impressive with his flippy shit. Yeah. Big Bratz Rope Fallaway Green Bay Plunge. I don't know the real name of it. And follow-up Twisting Splash gets a two. Impact Elbow, aka Thursday Night Delight, is aborted as he'd miss. Great stuff. Drake clears the snot from his nose, which gets the best heel reaction of the night. Oof. Gorgeous Spanish fly, but no... Masters gives Eli the belt, springboard Inseguri to Drake, clocks Masters, impact elbow, which is way more impressive than it sounds. It's a top rope tuck and roll elbow. And then a starship remedy. Starship (laughs) remedy. (laughs) Luckily, he doesn't crack the back of his head against the back of your head. (laughs) That looks so painful, Jay. Oh, my God. Our buddy Neo used to do the Starship Pain as well. He was the only like proper wrestler. He's a bloody his. good athlete. No psychology though. No. Steve would have loved him. <laughs> <laughs> ah, outside interference. Del Rio comes to the ring and pulls the ref out. Del Rio smashes Morrison with a chair and Drake with the belt. Draping Drake over Jomo. So yes, Eli Drake can retain his belt in 1930. So they're, you know, they're both out of it and Del Rio genuflects on the stage and the main event, Bound for Glory, both champion and challenger are losers. (laughs) 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 And we're done. Uh, What did you think of the match? That was a good match. Completely driven by Johnny Impact. Oh, yeah. 
Drake was a passenger, but he was fine. He did. Above, aboard the Starship Remedy. Oh. 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 Uh, he did what he had to do, but, I mean, Jesus, yeah, Morrison, he's still got it. He looks the same as he did 10 years ago, same build, same moves predominantly. He might have added one or two, but, I mean, executed really perfectly. An amazing athlete. Different style to the other wrestlers, like we were t- discussing Or Truth the last time. Always happy watching his matches. Again, crowd dead. So... <sighs> Who cares? But, you know, <laughs> I enjoyed the technicalities of the match. Mm, pretty much the same here. Johnny Impact really led him by the nose. Two awesome fucking spots. Johnny's underneath the barricade and his backward uh, green bay plunge off Brett's rope. I'll give him your due. After like 17, 18 minutes, they actually got the fans into the fucking match. And you fuck it up because another match on this card ends in interference. Alberto comes out, fucks it all, and just, I hate him. I hate him so much. Um, Not the good heat either. Not the good heat. So yeah, disappointed. Hmm. I love seeing John Morrison. I didn't, you know, I, I... I'm just going to repeat what Ook said. I agree, Ook. That's it. <laughs> so on that uh, sour note, <laughs> can you give me a sour note, Stephen? <laughs> That's like three notes. <laughs> 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 Let's take it to the aftermath. Alberto El Patron is back. For glory. Oh, welcome to the aftermath. So, what do you think of the pay per view overall? I thought it was decent. There was a couple of good ones, a couple of bad ones, a couple of mediocre ones. Happy to see most of the XWWE stars uh, now gone. Well, we still have Lashers and Del Rio. Evan Braun. Who? Oh, Evan Bourne. Oh, uh, he wasn't a star. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, there seems to be a lack of star power. Bobby Roode is gone. James Storm didn't step up to be the guy. AJ is obviously gone. Joe is gone. Um, And I'm just obviously comparing it to 10 years previous. Commentary team needs an overhaul. Josh Matthews is shit. JB sounds like he doesn't care anymore. So it hurt the pay-per-view. I thought it hurt you personally. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, (laughs) He wasn't the same guy. The crowd were mostly dead. And it's a shame both of you guys... You know, throughout the review, been like, oh, oh, oh. It's, it is, that is the reaction, the main reaction for TNA, because we loved it so much, and we were invested in it, and we wanted to see it do well, and... It's Financially just... invested in well, GFW. We bought, we bought t-shirts. Oh, no, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't buy gold. <laughs> Definitely won't be watching any more TNA. <laughs> this is a, such a sad <laughs> ending, isn't it? Yeah. Oh... It was bad. It kind of kicked off on a high and it went down pretty much throughout the entire show with like a slight tiny peak every now and again. It's really sad. I am done. I'll never watch this company ever again. They're going to die and it's going to be with a slow, sad whimper. Coming next month. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I thought the pay-per-view picked up in the second half. I enjoyed the X Division opener and the MMA match best, surprisingly. Jomo tried everything to rouse the crowd, but, you know, they don't really even have a half chubby for TNA. It's hilarious that there's no ambient noise of the crowd. There's no, you know. Yeah. So they turn the crowd down and the commentator's way up to make the silence less noticeable. And it's, it's that's very noticeable. Isn't it funny how silence can be deafening? Mm. Oh, geez, did you hear about this? Okay, so afterwards they decide to stay in Canada and we're going to do the TV impact tapings. Smith Casting sent out a call to hire actors $12.50 an hour, $50 a day to watch Impact. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
Okay, I gotta say, preface this by saying SmackDown also do this, but it's as a seat filler and it's free. You don't get paid for it. Interestingly enough, fans who are paid to watch TNA react way louder and better than real fans. What? Oh, God. <laughs> so if you pay someone 50 quid a day to go, yay, Eli. You know? they, they may actually do it. Like, Yeah. <sighs> it's the future. <laughs> <laughs> There is some awesome carny stuff. We already mentioned the sticker, the Impact sticker. GFW Amped. They taped it in 2015, but it only aired earlier this year. They recorded new commentary over it. So when Robert Roode came out, they were like, oh my God, he jumped ship from NXT to be a GFW tonight. Is that even <laughs> legal? <laughs> he is a champion in NXT. He has made the jump. Bobby Roode. The glorious one that they call him is everywhere and right here at Global Force Wrestling. Why don't you tell us what happened on the Impact after Bound for Glory? Alrighty. Eli Drake comes out, celebrates that the fact that he is champion, says he did it all by himself with no help at all. OVE and Sammy Callahan beat three jobbers. Then after the match, are attacked by LAX uh, and a returning homicide the night after not at your fucking Mania show. During this, it really felt like there was like a double turn. LAX were acting like like faces and OVE were very heelish. And then the rest of the fucking show is a very good backstage brawl between Johnny Impact and Alberto El Patron. Is that the one where Del Rio's going, hey, uh, what about... <laughs> Pew! <laughs> Can I get you two words on Johnny Impact? Johnny who? It's like a dog that's really happy to see its owner. And <laughs> it just, like, just bowls straight into him. It's, it's very funny. It's, yeah, it's hilarious. Like. It was the best thing on the show, and they're building up to something, and at least it feels hot. The end. Excellent. Of TNA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'll close our chapter on modern day TNA, GFW, Impact Wrestling. So before we say goodbye for tonight, let's take it to the wrestling is. There. SM segments. Awesome! The dog that bit me. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. The alley oop. No. Works every time. Marshall Tush. Okay, good, yeah. What? Uh. Uh. Wow! Uh. Uh. Now awesome. you see me? Now you don't! Oh, yeah! Yeah, that's gonna leave a mark. Well, that does it for this week, folks. Bound for Glory 2017 is on the books. In the pocket. Out of sight. Coming up in January is our Golden Nugger Awards. If you can't wait until then, you can catch all of our episodes. Fuck! Free of charge and an IMAX flavor 43 full screen at... Uh... Oh, it's the review.com. Boom! Yes. And if you can watch some Brucey Boni film reviews... On I don't review. want to think of Brucey boning anything, <laughs> mate. <laughs> but if you did, what website would you go to? <laughs> oh, it's review.com. Oh, no, wait. Not review.patreon.com. No. Nope. Oh, it's review.patreon.com. No. Nope. I don't know. Okay, www.com. And the network is network.www.com. So Nogger U would be on our site. Noggeru.oswreview.com. Boom. There you go. Mmm. Steve. Fourth time. First time. You can't prove otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Leaves everything in. Steve, what's on tap on Twitch? We're in the second week of December. So I'm going to be playing some South Park still. I'm going to delve into my second favorite game series of all time and play some Mass Effect also. Oh, uh-huh. um, so it's a goodbye from Ozzy. Pretty. Pretty one. Take a beer. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> <laughs>